Hey everyone, it is Sunday, August 19th, 2018 at 12.14 p.m. Um, today I'm going to continue with my series called The Sickest I've Ever Been, where I talk about um, a specific mental illness that I have because I have a lot of them. And I'm going to talk about um, when my disorder or whatever was at its worst and when I was the most sick. So today I'm actually going to talk about something that I have not talked on my channel about ever. I haven't made a video uh, related to it specifically. Um, so this one is about PTSD um, or post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, so a lot of people associate PTSD with war veterans and people that have been in the military, but contrary to popular belief, people that are not in the military forces can get PTSD for an, a plethora of reasons, whether it's um, a sexual assault, some type of, you know, disaster like terrorism or an earthquake or... Uh, getting robbed, seeing someone in front of you get hurt, or, you know, witnessing a violent act or something like that. There's a lot of different ways that people can develop PTSD. And I developed it, like, kind of, it's going to sound weird, at two separate times. Basically, I've had two very, three, three very traumatic events happen to me that contributed to the way that my PTSD affects me. And the first one um, is definitely when I was sexually assaulted back in 2015. Um, that really just kind of threw everything over the top. And then the first instance that caused issues was when my mom passed away when I was 24. Um, no, I was 23. Um, so those two things were extremely, extremely traumatic in my life. I mean, just given the circumstances of both of them, they really derailed my life. But I'll focus on my sexual assault because I'm more comfortable talking about that than I am talking about my mom. So my PTSD at its worst when it comes to my sexual assault is the main thing that I do is dissociate. Um... Also, panic attacks, which are, like, two completely different opposite things when you think one is, like, comatose and the other one is, like, very active. But I do have a video on dissociation. I think right now it has, like, 4,000 views, which is really exciting to me um, for people to know that dissociation exists. And I not only dissociate because of my PTSD, but I also have borderline personality disorder. Um, but when my PTSD is acting up or I'm having... Um, I'm dealing with something having like an episode. I don't like that word episode. Fuck that. What does that even mean? Just when I'm struggling with something or when I'm triggered, I would rather say, um, my go-to coping mechanism is dissociation, which basically means that I kind of just like turn off from reality and basically become comatose and unresponsive and, unable to speak, function. Sometimes I can't move depending on how bad the episode is. Um, I used to really struggle with dissociation around my sexual assault, even just like the mention of the place where it happened or even just someone mentioning the word sexual assault. Um, I would get extremely triggered and fall into a place of dissociation um, and then something that affects me, like, still kind of on a daily basis is something called hypervigilance, which is where basically you're on guard at all times, like, you're constantly, and you don't even realize your brain is doing it, but you're constantly on, like, high alert expecting for there to be a threat because we have the fight or flight response in our bodies. That's just how we're built. That's how you know, our ancestors knew to run away from a bear instead of run towards it. Did they want to fight the bear or did they run away? Run away. They ran away and that's why we're still here. But my constant body process is having that kind of scanner and assessing the, the potential damage. Now, like I said, I don't realize I'm doing this, but when I get into certain situations, maybe if I'm in an elevator alone with someone, I'll get kind of like, oh, 
Ooh, okay, I'm, I'm a little on edge right now. Um, also, flashbacks can be absolutely horrible. I have a lot of flashbacks about my mom and my sexual assault. Um, and the flashbacks are usually what lead to the dissociation and then eventual, um, sometimes panic attacks. So basically, if I can think of, it was honestly at its worst <clears throat> right after it happened in 2015, but then my PTSD was really affecting me earlier this year, like, like in January and February. I was constantly dissociating and having panic attacks and just not really being able to function as a human being, um, just because little things would set me off, um... I think the worst dissociative episode I had that had to deal with my PTSD, I remember I was sitting on the floor at my school, which was in the Google building, and I had dissociated and I knew that I needed to be away from people because back then my dissociation was so bad that sometimes I wouldn't be able to move. And I remember I was sitting on the ground and I was so like out of it that I remember like a fly flew by me and I was like startled and jumped. I remember at one point I thought that the ground like moved. Um, after I was sexually assaulted on my way home, I remember I was so dissociated that I didn't understand what my tears were. I remember feeling my face and not understanding what the water was. So dissociation is, is your brain trying to protect itself from a trauma that it can't handle. Whether or not it's happening in the moment or it happened years ago, that's your brain's body of saying like, okay, I'm going to take you out of this moment just so you can like, like take a break, take a fiver, or sometimes multiple hours. Um, <laughs> so that sucks when that happens. Um, but yeah, it was really, really bad, like, back in January and February. I don't know. I honestly can't even say, like, what was going on because I don't remember. I just know that I was really, really struggling with my PTSD. I started doing a specific therapy to address it called EMDR, which stands for Eye Movement uh, Descent... Descent... I can never say... Desensitization Reprocessing, which is specifically for PTSD... Um, and I did a couple sessions of that, but it ended up causing more problems, um, than good. So unfortunately we kind of had to table that because other symptoms and perhaps another disorder just started, started like showing up. So that wasn't very good. Um, but yeah, I guess just at its worst is the dissociation and then the flashbacks and the nightmares. Oh, Oh, I have nightmares. The nightmares usually focus around my mom and not my assault. Um, those are pretty awful because they feel very real. And I sometimes have repressed memory um, nightmares that don't feel like they were dreams, that they feel like they actually happened in my brain is trying to wake up and like remind me like, okay, this happened to you when you were a child, but you just don't remember what it is. Because I also have a trauma history as a child that I am not aware of. So when I originally said I have two events, it's actually three. Because if you count the childhood trauma, my mom passing away, and then the sexual assault. Those are three things that have all added into the diagnosis of me having PTSD. Um, so just to give like an idea of what a flashback looks for me, there's always this thing in the media that I've always heard or read in books that it feels as if like the person is reliving the situation and and sometimes they'll see let's say let's say you were a veteran and you're having a flashback you see in the space around you where you are fighting you might see the rock over there and the wall over there and the civilians over there that might be what a flashback looks like for someone but for me my flashbacks are um very visceral in the sense that it feels like it's going to happen again. It doesn't feel like the event itself is happening again, but it's like the thoughts of like, what if this has happened? Oh my God, this might happen again. And these moments are usually 
when I'm out in public and I live in New York City, so I have to take public transit, which is extremely difficult when you're having like flashbacks or an episode or you're dissociating. So when I have flashbacks, it's not I, I see the area around me. It's not like that. I just have the same thoughts and feelings that I did on the day when um, the specific events happened. Beyond that, I'm trying to think what else PTSD involves. So yeah, nightmares, hypervigilance is annoying, dissociation. You know, like I said, panic attacks. Um, that's about it. That's all I can think of right now. I'm kind of tired right now, guys, so it's hard to, to think about things. But yeah, it was at my worst right after I was assaulted and then a couple months ago. Um, cause I just, I really was really struggling to get through the days. So that is my video. I hope someone learned something despite my low ass energy, um, and my morose tone, but, uh, it is difficult to talk about my mom specifically, my sexual assault. I talk about that all the time. Like it's not easy for me. It's not something like I enjoy talking about, but it's much easier than talking about my mom passing away and all of the details surrounding her death. So maybe that's why I'm a little like meh on this video, but I think it's important for people to understand um, how mental illness affects people. And I want to end the stigma and idea that only people that are in the military have PTSD. You can get PTSD for so many things and it isn't just war and it isn't just rape. Those aren't the two reasons that you can get it. Like I said, there's so many environmental factors that a person can be exposed to in which they develop PTSD. And PTSD is actually, your brain gets rewired. Your brain actually switches the neural pathways and has a completely different response and way of, of working, um, which is really crazy. So... That's what EMDR therapy is all about. So if you want to do research and be a nerd, that whole concept is just extremely insane to me. I don't know how it works, but it does. Um, also, another thing that my PTSD affected me was Times Square. That was a really big tr trigger to me um, because where I was sexually assaulted, I had to go to Times Square to transfer to one of the trains. And I used to have panic attacks and dissociate while at the subway station. But luckily through EMDR, before things got really bad, I was able to, um, it's called like a target. I was able to like eliminate that and we honed in on it and Times Square isn't an issue for me anymore. So at least it has gotten better. I've learned coping skills. I used to self-harm and I used to drink over these things, but I don't do that anymore. So it's kind of just like gritting my teeth and bearing through it when things happen and then you know, sometimes my mind will just take over and like I said, I'll dissociate and not be able to function for a couple hours. So, all right, you guys have a good day.